If vaccines work the way they're advertised in terms of granting immunity, why would a vaccinated person ever have to worry about an unvaccinated person? Why still wear masks post-vax if the receiver is vaccinated as well? Um, it's going to be about breakthrough cases, I think. I think the only the only thing that I can think of, and I've, I have given this some thought, um, is that you know some number of people who get vaccinated still can get sick with the disease. Um, that said, um, part of being vaccinated is obviously about actually um, not getting the disease, and part of it is about being able to return to um, the life that you had before. So um, I, I, I don't know why we are being told um, that vaccinated people need to be worried about unvaccinated people. Um, you know, so it's true at a tiny level that you could get sick if you're vaccinated. Um, but I think more to the point, this is once again, not science, but social control. This is about this is about messaging and narrative and uh, reinforcing the you know like uh, the good people get vaccinated and the bad people um, resist and you know and, and we can keep going down <laughs> going down the lines of you know I, all of us will fall into at least one of these camps where suddenly we're not the good person anymore and um, and and once that happens once you recognize that you go like wow you're not actually using logic with me you're just you've just decided that I'm not your tribe and therefore you can hate me. Yeah, I think it's about punishing independence, and uh, it's also about making simple rules that do not force you to acknowledge a complexity. You know, yeah. the idea that people who have had COVID should obviously get the vaccine too, that is anything but obvious. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, if you say, well, actually, people who've had COVID don't need the vaccine because they've effectively had a vaccine, and these vaccines are more dangerous than uh, they should be because we know nothing about their long-term effect. So it's better to keep those people from having the extra risk. If you say that, you what? There's risk, right? Yeah. So you've done that. So instead, we're going well, to expose lots of people to risk that they don't need to face. I mean, this is part of what I, uh, we tried to get at, I think, a few weeks ago when I was you know, alarmed at the... Um, I don't remember if it was Pfizer or Moderna, but one of the CEOs said, yeah, actually, we think there's going to be need to be yearly boosters. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it is what it is. You know, either, either that's true that, um, that this is more like a flu vaccine than like a yellow fever vaccine or not. Um, but um, if that's the case, then having had COVID is not, you know, it's not going to provide lifetime immunity. And it may, you know, is it yearly? Is it twice yearly? Is it once year, every other year? You know, who, why did we just land on every year? Because that's easy to put on your calendar. Um, in the case of flu, because it's seasonal. Um, but is COVID seasonal? We kind of thought it might be, but now I don't know. You know, it's it's really hard to tell. The, the data just are, we're not being shown the data in a clear way. And so, you know, if the vaccines are everything that we hope they are, um, having had COVID doesn't provide lifetime immunity, it seems. And um, therefore, in order to be protected, uh, you, you know, perhaps should, should be expected to get vaccinated at some point. That said, um, increasingly now, uh, COVID vaccination is being required to do stuff like go back to school. Uh, and uh, and people are saying, well, it's just like, you know, it's just like the MMR vaccine. It's like, well, the M MMR vaccine is <clears throat> once as an adult and maybe you get every 10 years your titers checked. And I don't actually even remember if that's the case, but it may just be once as an adult. That's very different from if suddenly we were told you're required to get a flu vaccine. And I'm not equating flu and COVID. I never have. But it's very different from being told you need to get a re-up on a vaccine every single year. Well. There are two things in play. One is the decay of your existing immunity, and mm -hmm. the other is the evolution of the virus and its need for a new vaccine that's up to date. Yes, and you've made this clarification before, and I and I uh, confused. I didn't confuse yeah, them. I just didn't just, specify. You've them. lumped them. Yeah. Um, but the they're really very different. Yes. And uh, which one of these or both that we're dealing with is important? And the fact yes. is, we know very little. Right. We're learning a lot about how this thing is evolving now how it's evolving in response to the vaccine is a very important question. Mm -hmm. And then there's another question, which is how long does your immunity last to the initial uh, variant? Um, 
you know, maybe it does last a lifetime, but that doesn't buy you, it doesn't get you out of boosters if the thing is evolving uh, at a rapid enough rate. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Can family members who got the COVID-19 shot be sick with COVID unknowingly with mild or no symptoms and get other family members sick? Yes, unfortunately. It's rare, presumably, but again, breakthrough cases. I would say, well, so breakthrough cases, by breakthrough cases, you mean variants? You mean No, I mean people... Again, the data are crap, but yeah. what I have seen reported in the media yeah. is that some people who get vaccinated still get sick with COVID and can therefore pass it on because they, when they do, when vaccinated people do get sick, they tend to be low symptomatic or asymptomatic. And so they might, I think, therefore be slightly more likely um, to pass it on because not only are they non-symptomatic, but because they're vaccinated, they think they couldn't possibly have it. Right. So- Non-symptomatic uh, or low symptomatic, they may be less contagious, but uh, so I would point out again, here is, there's a hidden dichotomy too, because mm-hmm. there are people who are fully vaccinated who are nonetheless um, sick and contagious at whatever level they are. And then there's the Gerd Vandenbosch point, uh, which is people on the way to being immune are not fully immune and they may Mm -hmm. be in danger of spreading a variant or selecting for a variant that they could then pass on, which would be even more dangerous because it would be, uh, it would evade existing immunities from either having COVID already or from being vaccinated. So the next question actually um, speaks to his argument as well. Is Bush's argument about vaccines similar to the concern over antibiotic-resistant superbacteria? If other nations are going to over-vaccinate anyway, shouldn't we? It's a tragedy of the commons. That's really two questions in there. But um, it does seem analogous to um, antibiotic resistance. Yes, Um, in every way but one. And I want to think through the one very, very carefully. But antibiotic resistance, there's actually a solution for us at whatever point we get wise enough to decide to take it, right? Which is if you want to take your antibiotics out of circulation for a long enough period of time, you can restore the utility of them. And that's because all of that antibiotic resistance has a cost. And if it's not paying back because the antibiotic in question isn't in the environment, so it's not favoring the variants that have the resistance, it will go away. So you can reset that clock. I don't know of an analogous mechanism that will allow you to reset COVID. Um, COVID appears to be like running on a treadmill rather than some reset. Well, it's, yeah, it's not actually really analogous in this way because with antibiotic resistant super bacteria, um, incomplete application of the antibiotics is allowing the bacteria to become resistant to them. So you take the antibiotics out of circulation entirely for say 30 years or whatever the amount of time would be. Uh, And uh, then upon reintroduction, those bacteria that have since evolved many, 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 you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of generations um, are now naive to those antibiotics. Whereas, um, there's no, it's just not the same logic with vaccines and and COVID. It's not about you don't you don't want naivete. Well, let's put it this way: because we're talking the about virus. a virus, yeah, the calculus is very different. Because the yeah. thing that causes the antibiotic resistance to disappear is that the bacteria or fungi uh, are organisms, and that means that they have. Um, conservation laws, that they are paying the price for things, but viruses borrow all of their physiology from the creature that they infect, and it's a very different calculus. I'm not sure that there's nothing analogous, but I don't even know. I know how to fix an antibiotic that's no longer working. I don't know how to do the same trick for... um, for vaccines. I agree. Exactly right. So uh, that's actually interesting. Both of us at first were like, yeah, it kind of is. And like, actually, I think not. It is to a point. Right? And, and, but the but thing, then in terms of like mechanistically how to deal with the problem, right. it's not Solution-wise, it's not. But yeah. cause-wise, it is. The point is incomplete application incomplete of, application. of yep. either a vaccine or an antibiotic causes the thing that you're trying to fight to evolve a sophistication that it doesn't currently have. So yes, yes it's analogous to that point. And then what you do about it, I think, is not analogous. Yeah, I agree. I think that's right.